kind Sister Barbara Clare of the Sisters of the Blessed Virgin Mary, King Standing, in Birmingham. I am here to share with you today a reflection on today's Gospel, the second Sunday of Easter. It's from St John, chapter 20, verses 19 to 31. In the evening of that same day, the first day of the week, the doors were closed in the room where the disciples were for fear of the Jews. Jesus came and stood among them. He said to them, Peace be with you, and showed them his hands and his side. The disciples were filled with joy when they saw the Lord, and he said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father sent me, so am I sending you. After saying this, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. For those whose sins you forgive, they are forgiven. For those whose sins you retain, they are retained. Thomas called the twin, who was one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. When the disciples said, We have seen the Lord, he answered, Unless I see the holes that the nails made in his hand, and can put my finger into the holes they made, and unless I can put my hand in his side, I refuse to believe. Eight days later, the disciples were in the house again, and Thomas was with them. The doors were closed, but Jesus came in and stood among them. Peace be with you, he said. Then he spoke to Thomas, Put your finger here. Look, here are my hands. Give me your hand. Put it into my side. Doubt no longer, but believe. Thomas replied, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, You believe because you have seen me. Happy are those who have not seen and yet believe. There were many other signs that Jesus worked and the disciples saw but they are not recorded in this book. These are recorded so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, <clears throat> and that believing this, you may have life through his name. On the 22nd of February, 1931, our Lord appeared to a humble Polish nun, Sister Faustina Kowalska, she wrote, In the evening when I was in my cell, I saw the Lord Jesus clothed in a white garment. One hand was raised in a gesture of blessing. The other was touching the garment at the breast. From beneath the garment, slightly drawn aside at the breast, there were emanating two large rays, one red, the other pale. After a while, Jesus said to me, Paint an image according to the pattern you see, with the signature, Jesus, I trust in you. I desire that this image be venerated, first in your chapel and throughout the world. Jesus also asked for a feast of divine mercy to be established on the first Sunday after Easter Sunday so that all humanity could find refuge in him. Sister Faustina was canonised by Pope, now Saint John Paul II, on the 30th of April, 2000. He also established the Feast of Divine Mercy, celebrated yearly on the second Sunday of Easter, today. He said, Divine Mercy reaches human beings through the heart of Christ crucified. My daughter, 
Say that I am love and mercy personified, Jesus will ask Sister Faustina. So, like St Thomas, we too are invited to place our hands in the wounds in his hands and side. The wound in his side leads straight to his heart, as Saint Faustina discovered. How are we to respond? One way is through monastic life, which has been described as a response of love to him who is love. We do this through the vowed life, where we live in celibacy, poverty and obedience. In the Benedictine tradition, these vows are expressed differently as conversion of life, stability and obedience but essentially the same ground is covered. It is a great gift that the Catholic Diocese of Birmingham was founded by a Benedictine monk of Downside Abbey, William Bernard Ullathorne, OSB, who died in 1889. What might this heritage mean? I see two pillars, consecration, and prayer. In the Bible, to consecrate something means to set it apart for sacrifice. So, by our vows, we are set apart, not for any merit of our own, to live for Christ alone, to have a share in his redeeming work. This work is accomplished in the sacrifice of the Mass when we offer ourselves in union with Christ. In our prayerful reading of sacred scripture, as we sing the psalm, gathering up humanity and all its suffering as we do so, and as we serve Christ in one another. The Benedictine offering is expressed in the Sushipe, the psalm verse sung at every taking of vows. Lord, establish me according to your word, that I may live, and do not disappoint me in my hope. In the rule of Saint Benedict, the very first word is, listen. So I invite you today to take time to go apart and listen in the quiet of your own hearts to what the Lord is telling you. He loves you and will not leave you adrift. Tell him you love him and say the prayer of Saint Faustina, Jesus, I trust in you. May God bless you as you follow the risen Lord 